So let's start looking at the organs of the digestive system. Uh, of the digestive system. Uh, so we're going to start with the mouth uh, and we're going to end with the anus. So starting with the mouth, uh, this space right here is known as the oral cavity, also known as the buccal cavity. Uh, this is where we start the mechanical breakdown of foods. Uh, this is where mastication occurs, where we chew the food. Uh, that's going to mix the food with the saliva and it creates what is known as a bolus, which is a mixed food in saliva. Right, so here, right above the mouth, is the palate. That is the roof of the mouth. Now, if we go to uh, the next picture here, so look at this next picture, we see that that palate here, it has a hard part right there, which has bone on it, and then we have a soft part right here, which has skeletal muscle, all right? And then off of that, uh, the soft palate there, uh, is the uvula, and that, uh, comes down to the middle of the mouth. If we come back to this picture, that shows the uvula right there, all right? So when we swallow, uh, here we'll talk about swallowing it in a little bit, but when we swallow, this moves up to block off that nasopharynx so we don't push food up there. If we go back to this previous picture, we can see this thing right there, and that is called the frenulum. So this is a midline that's under the tongue, all right? So if we go back to this picture, on the back of the tongue, all oh, this is the tongue here, on the back of the tongue, right, right there, uh, are the lingual tonsils, all right? Now, if we go to the next picture here, showing the tongue, you can see a bunch of little projections on there, and these are highlighting those projections, and those are called papilla, and these are rough projections of the tongue. So this type of papilla is called filiform papilla, and they are the most top common type of papilla on our tongue, these rough projections. They give the tongue its rough surface. These do not contain taste buds, all right? Next are fungiform papilla. So these guys right here are fungiform, so this is showing fungiform there, all right? These guys do have taste buds, and these are scattered throughout the tongue, all right? Uh, next are circumvalate, or just valate papillae. These are found in a row in the back of the tongue. They also contain taste buds. Uh, next are foliate, so these are showing foliate here. Foliate are found on the sides of our tongue. They also contain taste buds. Now, if you guys remember, the different taste sensations that we have are uh, sweet, sour, salty, bitter, uh, and umami. Right, and so those taste sensations, I think I got them all. all right, um, so those taste sensations are found throughout our tongue, not just in one area or the other of our tongue. Next are the salivary glands. So if we move to the salivary glands here, these are glands that secrete saliva. Right, and so we have uh, a few of these salivary glands. So we have the parotid glands here. We have the uh, sublingual and then the submandibular. Now, look at the functions of saliva. Uh, the functions there are to clean the mouth. They are also gonna dissolve the food particles so they can be tasted, because these are chemoreceptors. They have to be, uh, the chemicals to be sensed have to be dissolved in a solution, all right? It also moistens the food, uh, and that's what creates the bolus there. Let's look at the chemicals found in saliva. Uh, the first is salivary amylase, and this is an enzyme that breaks starch, uh, breaks down starch in the mouth, so starch digestion. Next is lingual lipase. This is an enzyme that is actually activated in the stomach, uh, and so the stomach acids activate it, and so it starts to digest fats after that uh, food is swallowed. Also, there's mucus found in our um, salivary glands. It's going to help bind the food together and lubricates the bolus to be swallowed. And lastly is lysozyme, and lysozyme is an antibacterial agent. Oh, not lastly. So next is immunoglobulin A. This is an antibody that inhibits uh, bacterial growth, and there's also some electrolytes and water in there. So if we look at the cell types, we have uh, serous cells, and then we have mucus cells. All right, so sear cells produce this watery secretion that contains enzymes and ions. And then mucus cells, well, they secrete mucus. So uh, if we look at the glands again, parotid is mainly uh, serous, uh, submandibular is mainly mucus, and the subulingual is a kind of combination uh, there, but mostly mucus there. All right. Oh, submandibular, mainly serous. Sorry about that. All right. 
Now let's look at teeth. So looking at teeth, uh, we have primary teeth on the right side here, uh, secondary teeth or permanent teeth on the left. We get 20 primary teeth. Uh, we get eight incisors, four on the top, four on the bottom. Uh, we get four canines or cuspids, so those are the, the next teeth along there. Uh, and then we have eight molars here. So when these fall out, uh, we get these guys here. These are our permanent teeth. We have 32. We can get to 32 on these. So we have four, uh, you know, we have eight incisors, four on the top, four on the bottom. Next are the canine or cuspids. Now we have premolars or bicuspids. And then the next group there, so it's going to be three here, three here, three here, three there, are molars. All right. So the last of those molars are the wisdom teeth. A lot of people have these removed because we typically don't have enough room for all those teeth in our mouth. So, you know, unfortunately for some people, uh, their wisdom teeth can come in like so. I've actually had a student of mine uh, a few years ago that had a uh, wisdom tooth that looked just like this.